the best in the world. Yeah, right. And he, uh, that, I was going to ask what your response was because he predicted what your response would be. Uh, I think he's the best DB coach in the world. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I guess I, I don't. I guess it's hard for me to kind of comprehend that uh, uh, that compliment. So uh, I guess I just leave it at that. How are you guys? Doing? Uh, really good. You know, I think that we're all eager at this point to. Uh, see a different opponent besides our own defense, uh, but uh, doing really good work. You know, it's a hot, humid day today. Uh, it's, uh, uh, but they're doing well. I think it's amazing to see the maturation through the beginning of the camp, towards the end, both from a leadership standpoint, a young guy, growing standpoint. All those things are happening, and uh, it's been uh, it's been good to see. Hey Brian, you've been at Ohio State as a player, and coach, and you've seen a lot of great receivers come through here. I think especially with the offensive skill positions, it feels like some of the greatest players in Ohio State history were great from the beginning, as true freshmen. When you talk about a guy like Chris, to see the sparks that he made as a true freshman, how typical is that? And is that ever an indication of how good someone's going to be by what they do in the freshman year? Uh, I think it's encouraging. I think that, um, you know, I always tell these guys, I'm like, well, you can go out and have a really good freshman year. I guess what you got to do the next year? Be really good again. And then if you have a really good year again and again, then maybe you can, you know, continue to chase your dream. But... Um, we take it one day at a time, one week at a time, one year at a time, and, and I think that, again, uh, having success is encouraging. It helps motivate uh, probably the inner self and know that all the hard work you're putting in uh, is paying off. And, uh, and again, once you kind of see that uh, fruits of your labor, it's probably pretty motivating. But um, it goes for anybody, and I think that any time you start to kind of feel that uh, the, the work showing up on Saturdays or during the week, it can kind of re-motivate guys. So hopefully a lot of guys are feeling that way and hopefully they're feeling themselves getting better, even if at different degrees, which is fine, uh, throughout camp. Brian, I know that you were excited about your guys after, after the end of spring ball. What have they shown you in camp that I'm assuming makes you more encouraged? Yeah, I think it's just a continual growth that we've talked about. I mean, we don't focus on, you know, getting there you know, the next day. We understand it's going to grow. We understand coming through camp is – is a checkpoint, you know, it's not the end of the race. And, uh, and frankly, you're never really ending, so the end of the race. So um, we understand that, you know, week one, we can't look the same week 12. And if we are, then we didn't get better. And, and, uh, and other teams and other opponents and other receiver units probably caught us. So I feel like we're doing a really good job, uh, but uh, we're only as good as our last practice. We're only as good as our last game. And we're never going to lose that mindset. Right, what was it? Go six deep, I know. How close are you to being six deep? Uh, I know I haven't said that on thought about that yet. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only person who's been helping with that uh, decision, but I think that uh, I feel uh, really uh, excited about the opportunity to probably have a good amount of guys playing on Saturdays for sure. Brian, what, Brian how, does the, your, how does your front line talent from a year ago compare with the four or five or six that you'll put out there? Uh, I think, uh, you know, just like every year, uh, we get caught up in the past and. Of course, the past is always better than it probably maybe was, and then next year's going to be even better. The grass is always greener. So yeah. just trying to live in the present. I think talking about the present, uh, um, you know, can we be better? I don't know. I mean, in the end, it's going to be we'll be a different group, and yep. we'll be a different team, and will the team be better? You never know. But I think that, you know, different doesn't mean it's better or worse. It's just going to be a different approach. It's going to be a different uh, season, different challenges, and I think we have our mindset that way to we're going to put our stamp on 2019 from our group uh, this year. How is How it a you... deep defensive back room making this receiver group better? Oh, that's huge. I think that's probably been understated. I think that the DBs we have on this football team uh, are probably some of the best in the country, definitely as a group at least. I mean, I, I can't go, you know, person by person, but as a group, uh, very elite. They've gone to a whole, whole other level, and uh, I'm really excited to see them play uh, come, you know, two weeks. You have to, like, keep that in mind as you're evaluating guys that you're going, that, you know, what, what, what a guy might have graded in a different year could – Changed based on just who he's going up against. Yeah, you know, I think that it's more about uh, you know the understanding of the opportunity we have. I mean, in the end, when, when maybe a scout comes in or you know iron sharpens iron, but even when, you know after the season's over and the the, the best film we're going to maybe have, you just never know. Could be the, the defense we're going against. I know in, in retrospect we've said that about past years. Uh, that this year could be one of those years where uh, you know the defensive backs we see on day in and day out could maybe be the best we face all year. I don't know that. But I think it's got a chance that that could be this could be one of those years. Brian, right. CJ Saunders was, was elected a captain. What, what's he all about? Uh, You've been around here almost. Yeah, CJ. Years. You know, uh, he's a phenomenal young man. You know, I think that you know the way he started and seeing where he was at coming from Dublin and taking the opportunity and turning it into a scholarship and then into captain. I don't know. That's. I mean, it's probably un, pretty un, uh, unprecedented. I mean, as far as it comes to you know his path, it's phenomenal. He adds 
great depth to our room. He's a, he's a, a warrior. He's a machine. Like when I need a guy, he's always that guy. And I'm very, uh, um, feel very confident when he's on the field. So now, now again, he's got to keep getting better. We got to put it on Saturday. We did a lot of things we still have to do, and he'll tell you that. But uh, well, what a great uh, young man in our group and one of our seniors and captains. And in a nutshell, you personally, this time a year ago, I would think you were probably a, a mouse on a, <laughs> on a wheel. You know, you've been named. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. I'm talking much, about the difference? Yeah, what, yeah give, give me the biggest difference between you compared to a year ago. Just uh, you know, I think uh, that's a good question. I, I would say that maybe a year ago I was still playing catch-up, I think. Um, I always kind of feel like I – I'm playing catch up and I never, you know, know enough or I'm doing enough. But I think last year uh, might have been, you know, maybe a, a, I don't want to say I've lost an edge. There's no edge loss, but uh, definitely on pins and needles, probably a little more just being your first time than anything else. But uh, again, I, I still feel like a, a, I'm not at a level where I want to be and both for those players, the team, this university. So. Um, you know, I've always had a chip on my shoulder. I don't think I'm ever going to lose hey, that. Brian, so. Brian, Brian you what kind of talked to the you... spring about it. seemed like you wanted to tap the brakes on the hype for Garrett. Uh, you know, I think that I wasn't tapping any brakes on anybody. I think that it was just about, you know, where we are in the year that we got to focus on the unit. We're, yeah. we're replacing, you know, a bunch of seniors that did a lot of really good things, especially captains. And, and uh, although, uh, you know, Garrett coming in, he had a great opportunity to uh, play in his first year and earn some playing time. It was just more about the group, and it was more about not individuals. And and I think Garrett's done a phenomenal job uh, growing, uh, maturating, and like and, and taking coaching. So the growth has been really good, and I'm really happy with it. And again, like we said, especially for a young guy like that, we're not even close to scratching the surface on where we want to be. So. Um, but uh, I can't say enough positive things about uh, the way he's going about his business and the way he's willing to grow day in and day out. When a guy makes a play like that in the spring game, though, and that that sort of gets everybody talking, was that? Did you have to manage? No, I just game? I just pointed out how he lost leverage and it was a bad stem and it wasn't a good route. <laughs> and everyone else was talking about how it was a good play, okay. and it was a good play. Okay. But you know, again, we're we're not focusing on the pat on the backs and the attaboys. We're focusing on the things that we have to clean up so we know that we are a Ohio State starting receiver. And that's that's the mindset. And then once you do earn that opportunity, I want to make sure every day you bring it every day because it's not out of respect necessarily for the room or the current guys, but it's for the Chris Carters and the San Antonio Holmes and Joey Galloways where they know the guys that are on the field, they're well worthy of, of playing hard, playing good football, and playing Buckeye football. Is he going to be in the rotation? Is he going to I mean, what, what's your sense right now almost three weeks uh, into this? You know, I think that, you know, at this point, um, he's doing a great job. He's going to have an opportunity to continue to grow and continue to grow uh, not only uh, as, a, as a player, but also the opportunities on Saturday. Uh, but uh, I would say that, you know, I think Garrett Wilson will definitely be adding depth when it comes to Saturday. We'll see where the path goes through his freshman year. But like I said, he's doing a great job. The room is really healthy. And I think, uh, uh, again, we're going to continue to uh, groom a good, you know, four, five, six, seven guys that can ro roll. And, uh, and I'm sure he'll be one of those, one of those groups. Brian, being an assistant or a coach on a staff where the recruiting class that you guys have is mm -hmm. 90 to 95% full in August, what does that do? Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's my first time. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think that – what does that do with a full class? I think that, you know, it just says a lot about uh, the belief in Coach Day. I think it says a lot about uh, um, the communication. And really, I think what's happening is the recruiting cycle and the recruiting process is getting bumped up. And I think that it's just speeding everything up and guys having opportunities to maybe be on a class and not be in a class. And I don't know. I don't really know what, uh, what to make of it. But I think overall, uh, you know, we've got a, a great group of guys that want to be a part but of it. But for your, 